Ready? Hey, this is how every YouTube is. What's up, everybody? It's like that. <laughs> Yo, what's up? This is Faith versus Gravity. I'm your host, Ron Riley. And I have with me a very special guest. This has been one of my mentors since I can remember. Um, my big cousin, Carlos Bing. How you feeling, G? I am doing wonderful. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good, just another man. day, you know. Just, you know, just chilling. Kids back in school. Yes, Lord. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, but today, I mean, we just want to talk about mental health. Okay. Like, I know I... If I'm thinking about it back in the day, you really didn't hear about mental health. Um, I don't think there was a lot of studies, a lot of information on the battle for the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we know from Bible verses how that's one of the key things. But the fact that now we see like an uprise in mental health issues and the, the good and the bad effects. So this tell us about a little bit how you got involved in it. And actually, just, just give us a little bit of your background like sure. before that. Um, so it's kind of interesting because for me, what got me thinking about counseling was really, um, working with my frat and, um, I'm an alpha. So we do stuff with youth all the time. Okay. Um, I'm part of a, a youth group and I was working with these parents and students on just random questions they would have. And I kept thinking to myself, like, man, they keep asking me these questions. They keep coming back. Maybe I should go get some training on it. So um, after doing the youth advising piece for several years, I stopped that for a while and went back to school mm -hmm. and got my master's degree from Wright State. And um, it was just all for the goal of really being able to help other people. Wow. Um, because I know that without having good advice in my life, some of the decisions I made, they would have been different. Right. Um, and I think that's the key with counseling. It's like it's not so much about me telling someone what to do, but just giving them a path to consider something different. Wow. And then they get to choose but so that that's kind of what got me started was really people just coming and asking me like what should I do in this situation I wow. said well this is what this is what I did and um I often tell folks in therapy like I can give you examples of what I did but I'm not recommending you follow my path just yeah. this is what I did it might work for you it may not but mm -hmm. you got to make the choice that work makes sense for you wow mm -hmm. so when you're usually working when you're working with like you know teens and stuff like when you step back, are you like, man, this demographic really needs like more influence and like more positive affirmations and and different things? Because that's I think that's a little scary. If we look at like the next generation mm -hmm. are like really suffering the most. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can if if I say anything about mental health, I just think like it's attacked. Like our mentals are attacked every day yeah. with social media mm -hmm. and the you know the weight to be what we see. And that entangles our mind, gets us in the gets us in those spider webs, if you will, mm -hmm. that causes like so many problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what's some of the cases like as far as like the age range that you're like? Oh, the age range of clients, man. I I think my youngest client is probably eight years old. Wow. Um, dealing with some some stuff, family stuff, some just growing up stuff, and then my oldest client, I have um a family of four slash five, depending on who show up that day. Um, but the parents in that family, they're in their sixties, they're near retirement. So, I mean, oh, I, wow. I, I, rank, I have the whole range. Um, I see black folks, white folks, Asian folks, like the race doesn't matter. Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about making that connection with the individual and then just allowing them to like share their story mm -hmm. and, and help them figure out like, what's the best pathway to consider to go forward in. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned young people, and uh, like the bulk of my caseload is, is young people. Wow. Um, I would say probably about sixty-five to seventy-five percent of my caseload is teenage boys. And what I always tell every boy is like, I think all of us need therapy. Um, yeah. I think just every person needs therapy, but particularly our demographic, because as you mentioned with this social media thing, there's just so much information that's being fed in the head right. and then you're left to figure out am I going to follow this path or follow that path and it just gets real squirrely there's a lot of influences that affect our people our ki just kids in general yeah um and so being able to figure out a way to kind of navigate that stuff that's that's what a good therapist can help a person do right um 
But it, yeah, social media has really changed the game. I mean, you know, we come from we're eighties, nineties kids, right, so right. we have pagers and you know we had yeah. to write letters. Yeah, yeah, we had to write, <laughs> write yeah. the letter, and then we and you know it's eleven of us with eight in the house, but we had to wait in line to use the phone <laughs> if we wanted to, if you, you know. There's no so, more waiting. There's none. It's right at your fingertip, man, and um, it's so different, right? There were eleven of y'all. It was just me and my sister. We had the same battles. Yeah, there was one phone in the house. Um, now kids can get information just like that, right. um, which can be a great thing mm -hmm. if you're doing a research project, but it can also be a very scary thing if you think about killing somebody. Right. So it just depends on what spectrum you want, but you have access to the world at, at your fingertips. Wow. So like, so for somebody like me who, mm -hmm. um, as you know, me and my wife, we have a huge blended family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how? what are some of the signs that we need to look for when dealing with our kids and what are some of the activities that we can do to make sure that they're like their their mental is healthy mm, that's a good question man um yes. you know we both <laughs> come from blended family situations right in yeah. terms of our lifestyles now it's crazy too because when you think about blended families i mean it's it's the it's the nucleus of those in your house but then it's also those the other parents that are influencing pieces of your house right. and as the head i know for me and my wife you know, the one thing she hated was when the other person had influence in our house. She Man. she lose her mind over that one. And at first I couldn't really understand where she was coming from. But um, so we, we, we figured that out. But when you talk about resources for kids, especially in that kind of a situation, mm -hmm. you know, we, they always say the first the first educators are the parents. So, right. you know, obviously with me and my wife, we're you know, we, we want to make sure we're the best role models for our kids. Um, you know, make sure that if we have an opportunity to get them to church and have them involved in church, um, doing things in the community, whether that's giving back to the homeless or, um, I don't know, passing out literature about voting, whatever we can do to get them out there so they have those experiences. Right. Um, and just, just having real conversations. Like I know with my son, he and I had to sit down, my oldest son, he's 15, and we had a recent conversation because his attitude is poor. Now, he's a teenager, so it makes sense. He's, you know, he's starting to feel himself. But we had to have a conversation about, dude, you're 15. You're going to be 18 soon. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to manage these emotions. Yeah. Because just because I say something you don't like, that don't mean you can, like, lose your mind and snap off. I need you to be able to manage these feelings so that you can figure out if you can work with me. When you get out of corporate America, you can use that same methodology out there to be successful. But if you behave this way out there, you'll be jobless. Hey man, like so I'm trying to get him to understand that now as a young man versus wait until he gets older. And so that's part of therapy, too, which he be looking at me like, Dad, what are you talking about? It's just real life, son. Like, so, so, why, so why you saying that? I just remember, like, it's so funny now that we got to talk to our kids. But back, but back in right. the day, back in the day, that was it. Nice. Was the belt that did the therapy section, and it was just like I remember watching nice. Isaac Junior, Randy, and Rodney. You know, not in that order, but watching them get whoopings. <laughs> By the time it got to me, I already, hey Dad, let me get you a cup of water. So it was like I already, I already knew, but it's it's just, I think. Our parents, they didn't really they didn't have this type of information, Ooh, and uh -huh. you know, as the the world keeps evolving, I think we're going to keep running into those situations where it's like, as parents, we have to not, not necessarily change, but we can't beat our kids. We can't right. like be that type of discipline because, I mean, this the bad effects. I mean, sometimes it's like it when I want to, I have to talk to them. Like, yeah, yeah, there was a situation where. My son, um, it was like he he got accused of stealing money, and he actually had the money. Oh snap! Oh, and man. it was just like I wanted to believe him, but there was other stuff that happened as well that mm -hmm. he actually needed, you know, that rod. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to... But you know what I'm saying? It's like it's a time and place, but then it's just like do it. I was just like I I have to talk to this kid and make sure he understands. And sometimes, yeah, it does feel like, you know, what I'm saying, it's coming in one ear, going out the other. Sure, sure. I, I mean, it's just like something we just have to wait and see. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, but I, I did want to create this type of environment because, again, I mean, they have so many different outlets they can channel. Mm -hmm. And that's another scary thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. How, to, 
how do you when you see those signs okay i gotta hurry up and put this here to kind of recircle back so yeah it, it's tough man because they talk about signs if your child is suicidal or if yeah. your child is um you know if they're being bullied or um if they have an eating disorder like there's signs yeah. that are there right but how do you how do you necessarily know as a parent if you're not in the game like what to exactly look for right um and, and this this is uh not to cut you off like the you? side i was on it, it that's what it pretty much was saying like social withdrawal right. like strong feeling like all these signs and it's like man this is stuff we got to kind of look out for mm -hmm. and uh even in high school i mean when back in 2001 i think we were just all about uh you know somebody just got into a fight but these days it's like, nah, somebody, there's clown attacks. Like people dressed up as clowns. Right. There's, uh, you know, with the whole Walmart incident that's happening, it's like, we got so many incidences that are going on, and it's like, wow. It's mental health at the end of the day. It's somebody yeah. not put, really checking themselves or getting that help, and it's like, it's, it's horrible. If you think about it, when we were kids, and I don't, you're you're a couple years younger than me, but I'll give you an example. Like I remember when Emmanuel Lewis Webster, maybe it was Webster, or it might have been, no, it was Carlton from Fresh Prince. I remember when there was this rumor that he had did a break dance and spun on his head and broke and broke his neck. Hmm. But the way that story spun through the neighborhood, it took a long time, right? I mean, it took like you would hear it from a friend, friends would share it down the road. But by the time you heard about it, the story was probably about eight months old. Wow. Now, because information is so instantaneous, we're hearing about groups of people getting shot in China immediately. Yeah. Right. So yeah. then you're you're getting hit with all these different things, and you're trying to figure out like, how do I handle this information? And then, as adults, that's how we are. But then our kids are also receiving these messages, and I know there's some parents that are like, I don't even let my kids watch the news. Mm -hmm. And on one, and I'm like that. I understand why, but I also think there's got to be a healthy balance. Like you don't yeah. want to like shield your kids from all the earth because they need to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot out there that mm -hmm. it, it makes it, um, it's just, it's a different world now with the internet, with the access to everything, with, you know, news, the news cycle is 24 right. seven. Back in our day it was, if you missed it at six, you might catch it at 11, but, <laughs> but that was bed. it, but you got to be in bed. So then you got to wait till the next day. Yeah. Now that's not the case. You, if I if I miss a sports score, I can go on here right now. And look, whereas back in the day, you had to wait till the dispatch came. Right. It's just it's it's a very different paradigm in yeah. 2019. And it's, it was even crazy, like just thinking about back when um, when Biggie Smalls and Tupac died. Yeah. How it was, I was on my way to school when I heard about you know I think it was Tupac when he died. I was in like maybe seventh eighth grade, and then that following mm -hmm. couple it was like, but the information was delayed and I could only get that on, on the news. Right, right. But it's like the bigger impact when you see the Nipsey hustle died, it was just like everybody knew about it. You know, the phones became everybody's, uh, everybody had a camera and they could just say their messages and it's just, I was just like, wow. And you like, could read them. You could, yeah. you could be in that moment with that person, whoever you're vibing with. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the thoughts uh, we were watching this thing yesterday, and it was like how thoughts control atmospheres. And it's like well, the thoughts are just like somebody's thought and how they're feeling. It just translate, and everybody f felt that. Yeah, yeah. Like, dang, I feel like, man, I knew Nipsey. But, 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 but here's the thing, though. <laughs> here's the scary part. So these thoughts are in the air, but we're left to interpret. Right. So you might have a meaning for it, but then I read it or I see it or however I'm getting this, this information through that medium and I'm interpreting it some kind of way. I'm feeling some kind of way about mm -hmm. it. And then that causes me to react a certain kind of way, which may not have been your intention. But right. that, so that's a whole nother thing. Like, you know, it, it's just wild, man, how this whole thing is working. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So like in a marriage, like what type of advice you can give for um, spouses who are maybe witnessing their spouse going through some type of depression mm. or because you know a lot of people they don't like me and my wife we have a great relationship we can talk and we sit and talk mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there's people who don't even have that type of outlet yeah like what type of advice do you got for them man that's a good question cousin it's funny man because i so part of my caseload is couples okay. i probably have right now maybe three or four couples that i'm seeing and i remember this one couple that came in and I had saw them previously, so this was like two weeks later I was seeing them again. 
and I had given them an assignment to do something. I can't remember the assignment, but I said, when they came in that second time, I said, so talk to me a little bit about y'all's conversations over the past two weeks, how have things been? They looked at me both, they both looked at me square in the face, said, we ain't talked since we saw you last time. And I looked at them like, Dang. y'all in the same house and y'all ain't said, no, we ain't said nothing to each other. Like we come in from work, she cooks for herself, I cook for me, we don't say nothing. I said for the past two weeks, y'all ain't talked, no, we don't talk. And I was sitting there thinking like, how is that even possible but that, that that's what's happening in some households um i know right like, hey, that's crazy like you just walking past each other they ain't saying nothing i but, couldn't imagine yeah it's I, I mean i know me and my wife we at some point somebody gonna say something but in those cases yeah these folks are so far gone um and so part of my job was to help them to um communicate which so part of the difficulty in therapy is i can't say something is stupid <laughs> Unless it's like extremely like whacked out. But like yeah. for the most part, even in that situation where even in my mind, I thought y'all not talking for two weeks to me, that's stupid. I couldn't tell them that because that was their situation. Yeah. Right. So I had to first kind of break down my lifestyle and my um, how my wife and I operate. Like, yeah, we probably would never have a situation like that. Um, however, I understand you're, you're dealing with that now. Here are some things you guys need to do. How about a date night? How about yeah. just in the morning, say good morning. I love you, babe, or something to spark conversation. And even though a lot of this is, there's there's hurt, there's got to be more positive than the negative. Right. So what, I, what I've been focusing a lot with clients here on recently, especially couples, is focusing on um, not the deficit model, but more of what are the positives in your relationship? Okay. Because... The reality is, as human beings, we all focus on the negative way too much. But in most cases, the positive outweighs the negative. So if you start listing out all the positive things that are happening and focus on that, Mm -hmm. when the negative things come, you're in a place where you can handle it better. Whereas if you're in a negative space Mm -hmm. and then more negative comes, it's just going to be bad. But if you're more positive, that negative stuff, when it comes, you can handle it better. Right. Um, and I always tell clients, it's going to come. It's going to happen. There's going to be something negative that's going to happen. There's going to be a death in the family. Somebody's going to flunk out of school. Somebody's going to lose a job. Something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. What mental space are you going to be in when you can, where you can handle that situation the best? And the best way to do that is to be positive. Wow. That's really, that's really deep, man. I could never imagine being in a house for two weeks and not talking to my spouse. Crazy. Like, matter of <laughs> fact. If we're if if we go through something and like I may irritate her, she may irritate me. Mm-hmm. Listen, nothing is worse than going to bed and you don't feel the other person. <sighs> Amen, like, my brother. Like, yes. listen, like if 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 we go to bed mad, it's like we we had this experience where we try and <laughs> you, listen, bro, you don't sleep. Right. You sitting there, you're, you're just like this, right. and you like. Like, and it, the whole night you tossed an attorney, it was like, man, we could have been over this. Yeah. All you had to do is say, hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, that's it. So we have a rule. We never go to bed mad. If it, if it can't get fixed, then you need, you know, prayer or whatever it is. But is it that serious? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That is so the I, best way to I do never want to lose, lose sleep. So that's, yeah, yeah man, that's. That's big, man. I'm glad y'all do that that way because I had a situation with that with my wife probably about, it's probably been a year ago, and I remember laying in the bed and she snoring because she didn't forget about what the <laughs> argument's about, and my heart was doing like this. And I, just, I had to wake her up. I said, you know what, babe? This is unhealthy for me. I know you're tired, but we need to talk this out. And we did. Yeah. And then once we talked it out, I went right to sleep. I'm telling you, man. It's just we had to we had to navigate that negative space, that negative energy that was between us. Yeah. And then we were able to lay and go to sleep. So it was good. And I think I think uh, you know, being this is like my second marriage or whatever, mm-hmm. but I think I don't regret it. You know, I'm ha- I'm like happy. Yeah. But yeah. I just think it's people don't realize like, you know, the mental plays a lot into you know relationships you can't be in a toxic relationship Mm -hmm. that hurts everything it drains the life out of it yeah but i think it's also important like to actually be with somebody who actually helps you mentally as well like i know a lot of people can be like by themselves they're strong like i'm a strong person by myself but it's, it's just something else to have that person 
when I'm weak. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to have those moments. You're going to have those moments, man. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. that's nice, man. Um, that's a lot of information, man. That's really a lot of information, man. And I, I really appreciate, you know, you coming and dropping those dimes. I know for sure my wife has, like, a lot of... She's, re- she's producing right now. We Thank you. But we have a lot of questions, man. We actually want to do a segment with, you know, possibly you and, and your wife and just talking about marriage and, like, you know, faith and, oh, yeah. you know, and going there and going further, man. But For sure. So how can we... Um, I'll have your information on the screen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Typically, do you take open like walk-ins, or how does that work? So, if if someone is interested in therapy, they want to um, they want to visit our website um, www.keycounseling.org. And when you go there, there's a link for appointments. Okay. Go click on appointments, scroll down, and you'll see a place where you can go into appointments. I'll tell you that right now we are taking some new clients, but. Mm-hmm. It's crazy right now. We have a like there's there's eight to ten of us that do therapy at Key Counseling, and um, we're all pretty jam packed, which wow. is which is which is a great problem to yeah, have, but it's that's... also concerning because there's people that need help. Right. Um, this mental health thing, especially because of it being more public, mm-hmm. um, it's on the news, it's you know on the internet. I think it's going to continue to grow, and I think more people are going to be more willing to try it. Right. Um, we're probably one of the only all black um, counseling organizations ever. We call ourselves unicorns. Like you just don't really? find an all African American um, organization. And not that we wouldn't bring in anyone else, but just at this time, it's just all black therapists. Um, but wow. we see everybody. Anybody wants to come in, and I think one of the things that, that clients appreciate is that like like we let them know we're real people too. Mm-hmm. Um, we have problems just like you do. Um, we had to figure it out. You can figure it out. Um, and through the therapy sessions, hopefully we can help them figure out a path to success. But it requires work in session, and we, mm-hmm. it requires work outside of session, too. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, man, this was, like, impactful. This was a lot of information, man. You're going to want to rewind this, view it again. Um, again, this is um, some very important information. We're all struggling at some point, we need therapy. It's always important to have somebody there you can reach out to. So, again, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to Faith versus Gravity. Again, I'm your host, Ron Riley, with special guest Carlos Bing, my big cousin. Um, all his information is going to be somewhere on the screen right here. Thank you for tuning in.